Astrolog. Super Grunt! Oh, we're back again. Regularly scheduled once more. We're back in action. We for, are, we're always regular. We, we, sure, we are like a well-tuned machine. But always, we never you. miss. We never miss release dates. We never push things back. We never have anything get in the way of this wonderful podcast that we call "Sure It'll Be Grand," where two Irish idiots talk about mostly movies. Sometimes, sometimes now I can actually say it with a, a hint of truth. Sometimes we talk about games because we did last week yeah, briefly. We did. I'm Owen, and with me, as always, is Dan. I'm Dan. Dan is here too. Everyone, don't worry. Dan is here. Yeah, and I know. Best part of the show. I'm here. Yeah, well, you are the best part of the show. And what have you been up to, best part of the show? Ah, uh, that's very sweet. Almost as sweet as Sweet Tooth. Oh, fuck. I've been watching. He <laughs> found, he got segway. it. He found his own segue. I'm ruined, <laughs> I'm ruined. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, like, I'd like to say, yeah, I've been watching Sweet Tooth for the last week. I just watched the entire season yesterday in one go. Um, yeah, no, um, I've been enjoying Sweet Tooth. Uh, interesting post-apocalyptic stuff. Uh, a lot of weird looking uh, hybrids and that kind of thing. <laughs> Understatement uh, it of the kind year. Of the, it kind of felt like The Road. Remember that um, movie? Is it, it's that dark and grim no, and depressing? Not, no, it doesn't. But they have a father-son relationship, which is very, very similar in it. But it's not um, like as soul-crunchingly no, sad as The Road. No, but there are certainly <laughs> really bad things. Like People in it have suffered like really terrible ways. Like... Um, but yeah, no, um, that's been good crack. Uh, th- here's the thing, like I think like maybe two years ago, I got like the first issue of the comic. I was like, oh yeah, I must really watch it. I read that; it looks interesting. And I just never got to it. And suddenly, it's like, yeah, hey, there's a Netflix series coming out. I'm like, oh, all right. Um, now I don't have to read the comic. Uh, now I don't have to read like a fucking yeah. nerd. No, I don't have <laughs> to look at pictures in a book. How dare you? <laughs> was I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, Maria, and. Like, I, I don't know, we were just talking to each other, and I just went, she's a big comic fan, and I was saying, like, huh, well, at least I, my books don't need um, pictures, and she went, yeah, well, at least I don't have to listen to my books, and I went, touche, touche, because mm, I'm a big yes, Audible fan. well <laughs> said, <laughs> that's a good point, I'm old-fashioned, I like my books as books. I mean, I get it, um, but it's handy when I'm just walking around, and I want to, like, read a book. You know, um, that's what another thing I've been listening to. Uh, the Catherine Janeway autobiography, uh, the Star Trek one, read by Katie McGrew, who's the who played uh, Catherine Janeway. That was a joy to read. Maybe my favorite like TV tie-in book I've ever read, listened to. Really, really good. Uh, one of these days, we're going to get you really into Star Trek, Cosy, and you'll appreciate things more. I think you're going to try. Tan. Yeah, we're gonna try. We're Maybe definitely two, there will knows? definitely be an attempt made to get me into Star Trek. I feel Trek. like you know, I feel like I want to start you because you tried some TNG, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I watched like the first eight or so episodes. Yeah, like last year. The first season is mm, mm, it's not good, as you may have noticed. Um, I mean, mm, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, the thing the tricky thing is TNG is kind of like the good jumping off point for that era of Star Trek but maybe I'll introduce you to DS9 or maybe even Voyager pick fun. whatever you want sir and we'll do a bit of a review it will be and a battle it will be a battle but a battle full of honour unless you're picking the J.J. Abrams movies I'll I watch those I, but you have watched those. They're not Star Trek. <laughs> uh, they are. They're, they're, really, they're part of the canon. They're just a different timeline. That's all. Uh, and anyone who's um, a Star Trek fan who says, no, no it's not. Fuck off. Um, it is. <laughs> you know, we've, like, it's literally our Spock's mm. last few appearances. It's fucking canon. It's just a different timeline. Oh, I, w- I was um, more referring to the fact that it's not really anything at all like this, the old Star Trek shows. No, um, they're more it's, not. it's, it's they're farmer action, action movies. Like. Based. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, that's what you get when you have a producer who never watched Star Trek designed to make a yeah, Star Trek Yeah, you make movie. a good Star Trek movie is what I, Well, uh, actually, there's first a time for everything. Star Trek fans would say, yeah, you're right, because Star Trek movies <laughs> are a The movies bag. are notoriously not very good, even at like, their best. Like, 
they have like a every second one is really like Rafa Khan is fantastic, but like the original motion picture, a lot of people hate that, even though I like it. I love like the slow, like adoration All right. of the. I'm like, I'm just anyway, I, I, I hate to cut over you, but we right? will we should save this yes. for when we do do Star Trek sometime. <laughs> yes, but we will we will. <laughs> well, uh, I've been I started watching uh, a show called Mythic Quest. Yes, recently, you tell me. I'm gonna watch which that is today as well. I'm not I'm not super far. In, I've only watched it like. Three episodes, maybe yes. It's a short. They're like half an hour long yeah. or something. Oh, um, that's about, yeah. it's pretty good. It's about it's got it's uh, well, Rob Rob McElhenney from It's Always Sunny. Um, it's Always Sunny, yeah. And yeah, Danny Pudi, who played Abbott in Community, is also in it. He's not like a. That's right. Well, he's in it a lot. He's not like a. I don't know. I'm only three no, episodes in. Like, I can't tell you, but he's in it. Like, he's actually the main character. I don't know he why actually that. play. He actually plays the head of um, monetization for the company. So he's like the. The, the like evil grubby business person that they all like everybody else in the team hates him but they know they need him for the game to work kind of situation it's really funny Rob yeah. McElhenney is like the creative director he like built created this game called Mythic mm. Quest which is the biggest um, MMO in, in the history of gaming and they're they've yeah. just launched D&D. their um, they've just launched oh, uh, um, wow. yeah well basically they've just launched their um, first like expansion called Raven's Banquet and all it's okay. just really funny. It's c- it's for people who are like into into games and the gaming know. industry. It's pretty funny to watch the inner the workings of like a games development company and see them having to deal with like modern gaming. They have like a a strong like love hate relationship with like a fourteen year old YouTube star who's like they they're like if they don't get him to like approve like say he likes the game then they're fucked kind of thing like it's, oh, I it's bet like, that's a big part of oh they hate it. it's uh, so it's so f- it's funny though it's good i'm, I'm excited yeah. to watch more of it it's pretty cool other than that yeah. i think it's time we started talking about this week's movie and i'm super excited i love this yeah, movie same. so much we told you guys last week we're doing it we're doing the mummy which mummy own i hear you ask loudly in in uproar not not the 1999 brendan fraser the mummy, the best one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I say that with full with my chest. The best one. With your chest. The, with, I say it with my chest. I'm not oh, shying well, away from it. Owen's uh, chest has a huge authority. By I'm the way. S- not with. Uh, nah. It's a phrase. I'm not. <laughs> I'm this not. It's a phrase I haven't heard. <laughs> say it with your chest. It means I say it no. like you say it like you mean it. It's a phrase. Okay, that's interesting. You know, uh, okay, just because you're old. We. This is oh. the best. The mummy. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, it's a new. Fr- you're not hip to is the it lingo. It's a new phrase, is it? Yeah, yeah probably. You're not hip Did to the lingo. Did you just make it up? Is that no, new? I didn't make it up. It's a phrase, okay? <laughs> this is the best version of the mummy. There's been like bajillions. Yeah, the bajillions. There's been hundreds. Well, I mean, there's I don't three know, there's main ones, aren't there? Like the original 1932 one, yeah. uh, this one, and then one with Tom Cruise. Those are probably the three big ones. There's been others, yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah. But this um, yeah. Is, those are the three big, yeah. <laughs> People didn't suddenly think about mummies. mummies for about 70 years. And went, oh, shit, mummies. With, yeah, but, but like, it. specifically of this, those are remakes of rem- of each other kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like yeah. The, not just every movie. With a, although I would go so far as to say maybe this is the best movie featuring a mummy in general. Yeah, I guess. I don't know if there's many more out there. See, I feel place. like I could easily miss some, like, you know what, there's probably some mummy that's in a movie that's not actually about mummy. There's a variety of mummy that's really great, and I'm just purely blanking it now. Dark Man. It's not really a no, mummy, really. man. Also has a connection with this movie that we mentioned in our Dark Man episode. But the mummy, if for those of you who don't know, anybody who maybe, you know, didn't grow up in the 90s or whatever... The Mummy came out... Less than 21 years of age. Yeah, pretty much. The Mummy was released in 1999, and it's an American movie written and directed by Stephen Sommers. Sommers? Sommers. Yeah. I don't know. Sommers would have known. And it is a remake of the 1932 film, The Mummy, and stars Brendan Fraser, Long May He Reign, Rachel Weisz, yeah. John Hanna, <laughs> Kevin J. O'Connor and that Arnold. That was a sign of adoration, by the way, folks. It wasn't a. That was a. I just need to pause whenever I think about her. And yeah. Arnold Voslo, who plays oh, the yeah. titular mummy, who that's the Darkman oh, connection. Yeah. He played Darkman in the Darkman sequels instead of Liam Neeson. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which so <laughs> the two movies he did right before the mummy were Darkman Two and Darkman Three. Revenge you know what he of whatever. Always the, reminds me oh. of. He always reminds me. Like, uh, you know. Who played Doc Ock in the original Raimi Spider-Man? Oh, um, 
a little bit. Uh, oh God, he's coming back and everything for the, the next one. Um, you've I hate you. Oh, I can't. I think of his name. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Edward Molina. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, they always get mixed up in my head. And they don't even look that they alike. Don't, they don't look really at all alike. Alfred Molina, yeah. not Edward Molina, Alfred Molina. It's, it, Sorry. it's more like, like, imagine Arnold Vossler with the same kind of beard. No, do you know who he looks like to me? Like the spit of, to the extent that I'm su- I was surprised to find oh, okay. he was Arnold Vosloo and not this guy. He's oh, Billy on. Zane. Oh, there's a little... He's bu- oh. I thought he was Billy Zane for most of my life. Just a little bit there, You look at You Google bald Billy Zane and he looks I like this guy. I know what bald Billy Zane looks like. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I, I think I, he's... Mm. I think it's Billy Zane. It's not, though. I mean, oh. Arnold Voslo is South African, for starters. Oh, is he? Born and raised in South went, Africa. For some reason, my brain went, he's Polish. No, he's, he's, <laughs> an, he's an Afrikaner. Yeah. Ah, Good guy. Born and raised in South Africa. Started his acting career in South Africa before moving oh. to America to do Darkman one, two, and three. So <laughs> then, and then the movie is not exactly completely off because it's still on the same continent. Yeah, I'm, yeah, it's you know, it's cl- closer <laughs> geographically than <laughs> some others. Is it closer geographically? It, like, well, well South Africa. Yeah, I mean, I'm think, continent in the I, my, there. Yeah, I mean, my my view, uh, my view of Africa, the continent is is heavily skewed by the Mercator projection maps that we look at all our lives, where Africa looks a lot smaller than it is. Is it? It's still pretty big, even. It on is, yeah, it is, map. but it's on the mer- no, maps that we look at. Mercator yeah, projections. I know, I know, I like know. Canada and yeah, North America yeah, yeah. looks way bigger than yeah. Africa, yeah, when know, in yeah. reality it's not. But I, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. That, that, that's the cast. Uh, so this was yeah, Stephen Sommers. He wrote the screenplay. He wrote. <laughs> what <laughs> happened there? <laughs> I don't know. Oh he, no! He directed because it. he's secretly English. Dun, dun, dun. Oh fuck no! I'm that's our whole shtick is ruined. Imagine, yeah. Stephen Summers. Um, this is kind of his biggest thing. It was the biggest movie he had done at this point. He did the Mummy and he did the sequel, The Mummy Returns. Also, then after that, did Van Helsing. Um, yes. Which is another a movie. Favorite of mine as a child. Yeah, another movie, uh, not we, a good movie though. we loved when we. Yeah, it's not. Good. I watched that re- <laughs> co- co- semi recently, like a couple of years ago. I rewatched it. Ooh, it I mean, I rough. still like it, but it's not yeah. a good movie. Like generally, if it came out today, you'd be laughing. And going, oh, you'd probably look at it and go, this? "What is this shit?" Like, <laughs> but as a kid, it's like, yeah, Hugh Jackman. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, and Hugh another me Wolverine. Hugh Jackman and Kate Beckinsale, uh, who yeah. I loved from the Underworld movies and stuff as well. I had a big crush yeah. on Kate Beckinsale when I was a kid. Um, yeah, but he did Van Helsing too after The Mummy Returns and then he did G.I. Joe Rise, The Rise of Cobra, which I haven't seen because I've absolutely no interest in G.I. Joe whatsoever. No, same. Did you know, I'm looking at the IMDb page uh, for The Mummy and like some of the more like this is like like a series of uh, This Is Your Life in cinema when you were 14. Like This has Hellboy, mm-hmm. Scorpion yeah. King, Blade, yeah, Underworld, Na- even National Treasure Men in Black is like oh my god these are all the movies that made every- me yeah everything we loved when we were like 13, 14 <laughs> yeah. that, in around that age group and The Mummy was yeah. the king of them all well I mean Lord of the Rings was kind of king of them all but The I Mummy was the king of them all well. <laughs> Underworld was really great we must I loved Underworld, Underworld yeah there's a bunch there's a bu- well there's like six of them now it turned yeah, into like a I Resident Evil I've seen all of them I've seen all I of them they start it starts good then it gets kind of dumb and then they bring in this whole like fucking um they kind of go back in time to like a, yeah. a lycanthrope versus vampire war kind yeah, of thing. Lycanthropes are like slaves or something. Oh, aren't they? Yeah, it's yeah pro- it's I love really that one. Well, it, that's like Rise of the Lycanthropes, I think maybe that's a really yeah. good one. And then they do another one in, in Kate yeah. Beckinsale is in the mall somehow. Yeah, well, we I think she missed on one. The list. Let's do let's do an Underworld month. On Underworld two born slippy. Yes, I'd, we should. Yeah. We will do that. Yes. Underworld versus Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah. Movie by movie. Yeah, next season's <laughs> just those movies. That's, not yeah, that's all we're doing for the whole of season two. But yeah, so that's The Mummy, I guess, in a nutshell. It was released in 1999, like I said. had a budget of about $80 million and made $416 million at the box office. It's a big budget the, movie for the time. Uh, yeah, $80 million was pretty, pretty... Yeah, yeah, Universal put a lot behind it. Uh, based... Well, we'll get to that in a moment when we dive into the next scene. I'll talk through... Bits and pieces of it, which yeah. I suppose we'll do now, because I have nothing else to say about the mummy off the top. Let's go into what the hell is going on here. 
Well, what the hell is going on here? The Mummy, just to give you a quick a quick rundown of the plot, is set in 1920s-ish yeah. era. Strong Indiana Jones vibes yeah, just, from the just entire thing. World War One. Yeah, World and War it's War. it's set in Egypt and Rick. No, what? Rick? Is that his name? Rick, yes, o- Rick, Rick O'Connell. O'Connell. Sorry, I got I had yeah. a brain total brain fart there. I knew his name was Rick O'Connell, and then I started saying it, and my yeah. brain went, "That's not his name. That's you're yeah. thinking of Blade Runner, which is also Rick." But Rick O'Connell, yeah, played by Brendan Fraser, who's like an American adventurer, soldier type. Um, and he finds, he in, well, I was going to say inadvertently, but at the start of the movie, he stumbles across the ancient, hidden Egyptian yeah. city of the dead, Hamunaptra. Fisher Hunters, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he's, well, Hunters he's in the Foreign Legion, and they, like, leave, they march into Egypt from Morocco to find yeah. uh Hamunaptra, which is a famed, the fabled lost city of the dead from ancient yeah, Egypt. Which only appears when the sun hits the sky. Oh, I don't know. Right? And apparently has like tons of gold and stuff in it, but it's also cursed. And Would you enter a city, like you live in the real world, right? And you find the city and it only appears when the light hits the sky in some way. Would you stay there? Like, like imagine now you're living in the real world. Would I stay in the city? Yeah, this, or would you even go to the city that only appears when it just appears as a mirage in the yes. desert? You're insane. Yes, I would. Be the first thing I, would, I do. You know if I heard about a city like that, I'd, I'd be like, I'm out of here, boy. I'm going straight I can to imagine, it. I'd be like one of the people that went along as one of the diggers and, it, and the city appears and you know they all start running. I'd be running the other way. It's like, fuck. <laughs> no, I'd be in. I'd be all in. But Rick O'Connell finds Hamunaptra and then, then we skip like... Oh, well, his whole fucking... Everybody dies except him and Benny, we and find Benny. out later, also survives. But we skip, like, three years. Rick is in Cairo. He's in prison. He's about to be hanged. And Rachel Weiss, a.k.a. Is she hunged? A.k.a. Evelyn Carnahan, who is a uh, clumsy but After brilliant... he came to life, yeah. Yeah, essentially. She's a clumsy but brilliant Egyptologist. And yeah. her and her brother, uh, her brother thinks he's found... Ham, a map to Hamanaptra and they find out Rick O'Connell is in jail he says he's been there they like free him blah 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 and they go to Hamanaptra and they end up inadvertently freeing an ancient cursed priest of the dead yeah, called Imhotep because, who is going the whole thing about, I think the whole thing about them, it was that when he was cursed to have a terrible like undead life it also gives him superpowers if he gets taken back out. Yeah, it's also, yeah. So he's dead. He's like in a yeah. state of undead while he's in yeah. his sarcophagus or whatever. He's not in, yeah. he hasn't gone to the underworld. He hasn't gone anywhere. He's just kind of yeah. decaying slowly ah, and dying. Death. It's only the beginning. Yeah. And then they read from the book of the dead and he comes yeah. back to life as a mummy and starts eating people and brings the 10 plagues of Egypt they, with him and thing. tries to resurrect that's his dead girlfriend by sacrificing Evie. But that's the thing about that's the, the, like the, the <laughs> Yeah, but like like the, the, the spell, like the how they buried him, it's meant to be like the most powerful, terrifying thing you can do to someone, but no one does it because it also gives them superpowers. And like, that's certainly a take. I mean, you could just kill them. Just, just kill yeah, them. Yeah, they could have, but that wasn't that wasn't good enough. Because he he touched the shoulder of the pharaoh's wife, Anak uh, no, mistress, mistress, not Anak Sonamun. Mistress, I just love the way he says that. Anak Sonamun. Anyway, yeah, th- that's the plot, I guess, in a nutshell. The pharaoh who looks, I mean, I'm not trying to be bad, but the pharaoh looks very, very not Egyptian. Uh, the pharaoh? Yeah, he he looked very white guyish to me but maybe i'm wrong you know there's a lot um you he know, um he the, he's him. israeli okay so well, perhaps yeah. yeah it's it's in the ballpark area it's in a bum um, yeah be, yeah anyway the that the, yeah I mean, we're not we're not gonna go not gonna go through the entire plot bit by bit but it's a super this is a super fun movie to be honest yeah. and it's got hints of everything i think there's there's you got your adventure you got romance you got slapstick comedy you've got bits of horror 
there's bits of body horror and stuff in it ooh. that are kind of like ooh, especially at the start when they're first like investigating Hamunaptra, and it's all like it's weirdly it's done quite well. It's it's like the the way they like build up to the mummy's eventual appearance and presence before he starts eating people and turns into sand is pretty cool. To be fair, yeah. Um, Eyes but, being removed, tongues being removed. Mm, yeah, that I yeah. Arms. Oh, the, the scarab shit is. Ugh, yeah. Hit. yeah, yeah. That, I remember even as a kid, that was the one few times I had to look away. I just no, no, can't even look at it. Yeah, the, the scarabs are almost scarier than than Imhotep in a sense. They're yeah, the big, they're cool. the real big bad. Although he does, does kind of anything else. Just get an army of scarabs. Just throw scarabs oh, into Cairo, and <laughs> that's that's the end of the world. Yeah. People <laughs> would just leave it. Oh fuck no, I'm not dealing with this. Oh, shit. I'm out of here, bro. But this is yeah, it's kind of like this is. And it was very okay. So here we first first point talking point. The this movie spent a lot like quite a long time like in development in production and went through a bunch of different iterations of what it was going to be. When like the producers uh, James Jacks and Sean Daniel went to Universal and were like, "We want to remake the Mummy. We want to up- make an updated version of 1932 film, The Mummy." And Universal yeah. were like, yeah, sure, go ahead, but we're only going to, you have to keep the budget low. We don't want to spend a lot of money on this. Like, they were only going to give them like 10 million. They were like, if the budget, if you can't make it for 10 million, don't bother. Because yeah. Universal were basically like, we're going to, this is going to be a low budget, like horror type franchise thing that we're going to just throw out. So they yeah. got in first. The producers got Clive Barker in to write and direct the script. Clive Barker, the uh, famed, like, horror novelist. They got him into write and direct it and he he was going <laughs> his version of the film was that the plot was essentially it was going to be a lot darker and creepier and more violent and the story that he came up with was that the head of an art museum turned out secretly to be a member of a cult that was trying to revive mummy reanimate mummies from ancient egypts and the the producer said that version was dark sexual and filled with mysticism Oh, I don't like the sexual part. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Very <laughs> weird. But eventually, Barker, they had a bunch of meetings, and then Barker was like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's whatever. It's taking too long. So then they got Joe Dante in, and uh, they gave him a little bit more money because he wanted to make the movie with Daniel Day-Lewis playing a mummy. Which okay. is a take, <laughs> certainly. <Surely is. laughs> So he got that in, and his version of the movie was, like, set in modern times, and it was, like, a story of reincarnation and a love story type thing with Daniel Day-Lewis playing a a reincarnated mummy. There's bits of that still in this one, yeah. Um, And they almost made that movie. That came very close to getting made, and this the flesh-eating scarabs that we just mentioned came from that version of the movie. Um, But... They, the studio, they eventually they Joe Dante was like, nah, because the studio said it was going to take too much money and they wouldn't give him any more money. So then they got in George A. Romero, who was essentially going to make Night of the Living Dead, but with mummies, kind of is what they wanted him to do. Yeah. Famed, famed, well, famed yeah. zombie movie director. Um, so yeah. they thought, they, and then he was like, he got, I don't know, so two other people, he made like a draft of the script and it was does not sound like Night of the Living Dead with mummies. His script was a contemporary romance in which a female archaeologist named Helen Grover finds the tomb of Imhotep. And then Imhotep, here's the kicker, gets brought back to life after his cadaver is exposed to rays from an MRI scan in a high-tech forensic archaeology lab. That's how MRIs work, yeah? Yeah, that's what MRIs do, I think. And then yeah. like, from there, they, like, fall in love, and Imhotep is like, I need to learn how to be a modern man kind of thing. But all, know, but at the, the, but in the background, one of his, like, slaves that was buried with him also comes back to life, and he starts murdering people or something. I don't know. It sounds, you know, <laughs> sounds nuts, to be honest. What's that movie about that one who had sex with a fish recently? Oh, um... Eh, oh, the... F- Sound of Water? Y- yeah, yes. Yeah, the sound of uh, water. <laughs> something like no, it's not that. the it's sound not, of water. I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Yeah. The, but, um, my brain is. Not I working. have a friend who, um, you know, to her credit, she's kind of in the furry, um, fandom kind of thing, and I bet she would love that kind of movie you just described. That sounds like right up a lot of people's alley. Not in a weird way, but like in a genuine, 
you know, that that romance with monsters is a popular theme throughout cinema, like. Uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's The Shape of Water, by the way, was that movie. The, water, yeah. Guillermo del Toro Oscar Hear winning the life, thing. the sound of he, water. He, may, he, does, he does do a lot of weird shit like that. I didn't like that movie. But, like, uh, but yeah, actually been a, it's like a it could have been. You know? But again, I'm not sure why. I think that didn't that ended up not happening because Romero was contracted to do a different film and he couldn't get it. He couldn't get out of it in time to start making this one. So they were like, all right, fuck it. Let's do something completely different. They didn't like want to take his script and have somebody else do it. They were like, fuck it, let's get something else. So then they then they asked Wes Craven to do, to make The Mummy. And he said no. <laughs> he was just like, nah, don't want to do it. So they eventually, Stephen Summers, the, that did direct it, he contacted the producers himself and pitched this movie, basically. He was like, I want to make... I hear you make a movie that no one wants to make. Yeah. Oh, he was like, <laughs> he basically called him and was like, look, I've wanted to remake The Mummy for years and I like other people are always attached to it. I hear you're looking for somebody now. Here I want to make the mummy as Indiana Jones slash Jason and the Argonauts with the mummy being the bad guy and we have a hero. And they went, Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, that sounds cool. And the studio went, actually we love that. Here's eighty million dollars. And he went, Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. It's interesting. All those movies you mentioned though, they there's bits and pieces of that exist in this one of the sequel. Yeah, there's bits of it. I'm sure they Universal had the kept the drafts of all the other scripts yeah. and he probably was able to pluck things from them. But the reason they gave him so much money, I love this, is because a movie had just they had just released a movie to the box office that was a massive failure. Do you know what movie that was? Um, is it Rocket Man? No. No, no, no. No. Oh. We haven't covered it on the show. Oh. It's just funny. It was I Babe, want... Pig in the City. What's Babe? Pig in the City was <laughs> At the box office, yeah. Babe Pig oh. in the City was a big... They Universal lost a lot of money on Babe Pig in the City. Yeah. And, and the they were like, fuck only it. only memory of that movie being on a ferry from England to Ireland watching Babe in the City. That's like the only time I watched yeah. it like, when I was a well, kid. Yeah, I don't... I can't... I'm sure I saw it when I was a kid, but I was never a, a babe... You're George. not part of the Babe fandom? I'm part of the Babe <laughs> fandom. A hey. lot of people look at it because it, it comes up often when people go, man, George Miller could direct anything. And they look at his filmography and it's like he went from Mad Max to Babe. And it's like, what? <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> Who is this man? But uh, yeah, that was so Babe Ping in the City came out and it was a big loss and Universal were like, fuck it, we're going back to basics. Saw the script for this and we're like, here's a shitload of money. And I mean, it worked because they made a ton off of this. Yeah. They, and the sequels too. It was so too. good that they made a terrible spin-off and a third movie. They, uh, yeah, well, like the sequels were also really successful. <laughs> like, the sequel, like Mummy Returns was mint. It was beautiful. Yeah, but Even the, though it the, was basically them just extending it a little bit and telling yeah, the story much. again. But the <laughs> like Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, the third one, also made a load of money. It, oh, and the Scorpion again, King made a load of money. This is a big franchise. Yeah. I know people who are big, big fans of the Scorpion King, and I always want I to ask it. them, you know, why. I like the Scorpion uh, King, like the actual Scorpion King, not the version, the weird, awful yeah. CG Scorpion King we get in the Mummy Returns. <laughs> the yeah. the movie itself, I liked it. Now again, I liked it when I was fifteen. Yeah, I enjoyed watching it when I was that age. I don't know if I've, and I haven't seen any that. There's like f three or four straight to video sequels for the Scorpion King that I haven't yeah. never seen. Yeah, there's a bunch. The Rock isn't in any of them, I don't think, but there's a bunch of them. <laughs> isn't he the Scorpion King? He, yes, technically. Is his character he continues is, in What's the his other name? Story? Matthias or something is his name in the movie? Something along those lines. And he's the last living, blah, 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 I don't know, something fucking, he's Scorpion King. I think he's Scorpion. Maybe he's not. Yeah, he is. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So that's, this movie was a long time floating around. There was, could have been a, this could have gone so many different ways. Like it could have been such a different movie. And instead we got this, which, thank God, thank God we got this one, because we got Rachel, we, we, we got this one, which means we got Rachel Weisz yes, E.B. Um, Karen, Karen yeah. And uh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my like God. I said, Aphrodite come to the, life. Like, I yeah. genuinely, the, the best, the best uh, human being has ever looked on film. I think yeah. in this I mean, I'm, I'm usually one like, I don't mind, <laughs> you know, 
what a, a person looks like it's about performance and she does really well performance she has a really interesting character arc we were kind of talking about beforehand whereas i really didn't like her at the beginning but by the time the end of the movie comes around to yeah i love this one now she's less prim and proper she's ready for adventure she's kind of tougher i like this but yeah she's even if she does spend cr- the the last 40 minutes of the movie in a nightgown <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that's why maybe like that's it. why no it's not nah, it's she's not. brilliant actually, this. I like and her this, character and this was Rachel yeah. Weisz's big break too like prior yeah. to this she hasn't she was she'd done a couple of like yeah. movies but this was kind of like this introduced Rachel Weisz to the world everyone was like holy balls uh, but let's be fair like there's a lot of attractive people in this movie um, there is I mean of- yeah I mean Brendan Fraser himself is a very yeah. attractive man in particular in this one he he's dashingly yeah. handsome, and we didn't fucking deserve Brendan Fraser. No, we did um, not appreciate him in his time, and now where is he? Fucking. Also, look, I'm a straight guy, but Odette Fair, holy crap! Like oh. he's turned he, uh, the the leader of that desert. Tribe. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like incredibly handsome man. <laughs> like there's a meme going around which is basically, hey, what's your sexuality? The cast of the mummy. The cast of <laughs> like, the yeah. mummy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. this was this was for people of our age watching this movie as a, like a, a preteen teen. This movie was part of the sexual awakening yeah. of thousands it's of just, people. Which is being just everybody. Like. It's like we. I was sitting here going, "Wow, is this what it's like to be?" I was looking at fucking Rachel Weisz. Is this what it means to like girls? And other people yeah. were looking at Brendan Fraser and looking at <laughs> just yeah. pick a cast member and go, yeah. I, I'm, I, okay, I like things now. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Those adults are right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck me. Wow. This is awesome. <laughs> I mean, look at Bernard Fox, you know, you're wondering who Bernard Fox is, don't you? Is he the museum curator? <laughs> no, no. He's the old uh, English fighter oh, pilot. Oh, the fighter pilot. <laughs> Who I... The ultimate fox, you could say. Yeah, yeah. You know what I watched it this time? I, as, as soon as he came on screen, I went, I bet you Dan likes that guy. I do a bit, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a... you do as well. Come on, no, you he's can't fu- not yeah, like I don't, him. You don't, I don't dislike him. He's a good character. It's just, and he I... got his thing. You know, yeah. just, he wanted to die in the Great War like his friends. And then when he crashed, I, I I forgot he died at that moment. When I was like, "Oh, he dies. He probably dies here, doesn't he?" And then it's just like, "Yeah, yeah." And he sinks into the sand. You know, for someone what who's great like war against... was he referring to? By the way, World War One. That was called the Great War. His friends died in World War One. Yeah, which was two ended two years prior to the start of this movie. Right. And he's like seventy. Yeah. It was it two years before? This is set in like 1920. I okay. All right. Uh, I, mean, I don't think he's talking about the great the World no, War. No, the War. Great War is World War One. Like, was it called the Great War in that yes. in 1920s though? Yes, it was. It was. It was called the Great War. That was the whole term for World War One before we yeah, got I don't World know. War Two. I, I didn't think <laughs> it about wasn't it. Called, people yeah, didn't yeah, call yeah. World no, War One World War One. They, call, they, they, how, they call it World War One like the day it started. Yeah, reminds me of immediately as soon as Franz Ferdinand was. This is Doctor Who episode where they <laughs> bring they find a, a, a general from World War One and they go, Oh, you must be from World War One and he, he starts talking about all other things and the guy goes like, Sorry, what do you mean World War One? <laughs> it's like, ooh and he goes, uh spoilers? Uh, uh. <laughs> spoilers. Uh-huh. Who said yeah, that? But... Fucking curly haired one. The doctor's wife, uh, River Song. Uh, River, yeah, River Song. Spoilers, yeah. dude. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I didn't like River Song. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't think I had any ill disposition towards her at the, at the time. To be honest, I I, I really like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I don't know, man. The whole cast, we just didn't deserve Brendan Fraser. To be honest, I wish he'd come back and he do stuff. Back he's in something. Well, he did. Um, uh, the the the, 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 the DC there, thing with the death death squad death people. I can't think of the name of anything today. What the fuck is wrong with me? Um, I, I think you got my brain for today. He did the DC uh, thing, <laughs> That's Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol. Hey, yeah, there, there you go. it is. Hey. Yeah, which was too my weird God, for me. Yeah. Too too out there for me to be honest. I couldn't yeah. watch it. But, but it, it, it honestly, it's really sad because he did not get. A lot of big roles after this. He, he he was quite a big name already before this movie. To be fair, he did a few like very popular movies, but he injured his back really badly doing these movies. He almost and died then, filming this one. 
You know the scene yeah, where he's he, where Rick is getting hanged. Yeah, they actually hung him from a rope, and he like his like really? they didn't intend to like, but they like had it too tight, and his oxygen got cut off, and he had to be like resuscitated on set. He oh, did, I, almost died. Yeah, because I was looking at it. I said, "How do they do that?" Because they actually show that you know him falling and mm. being hung, and I'm guessing it's all t- there's like a back harness underneath his shirt or something. Yeah, there's something like holding him up yeah. elsewhere, but like it wasn't. Yeah. They didn't do it right, and he like his actually went unconscious and almost died oh god yeah mm-hmm. uh, no i mean i know he got really badly injured in general just from doing these movies and then he had the ad problems in real life with his w- ex-wife and alimony and this kind of stuff and like he kind of lost his career and he was not doing well but now he's kind of getting popular again and people just ran these heads. you know what fuck him we love him what the- how could we turn our backs on him you know yeah bring and back Brendan Fraser, we love you. Yeah. Oh, could you imagine they actually made another mummy movie, but let's let him be like now the older person, you know, he's he's still adventure. Like, just don't make him do all the obviously back breaking stuff. Yeah. But you know It'd be sad. I'd like that. Have you seen that. him now? Yeah, he's a little bit stiff and yeah. He doesn't look well. <laughs> but hey, look, he's no, here no, to his credit, he's doing great stuff uh voice acting wise yeah no not, not against Collins. them it's just it's no, just no, like the yeah. the collapse of because he was he was the, the like late 90s early 2000s he was surely the biggest movie star on the planet yeah he, he was in everything he was from really, fucking like yeah. george of the jungle up right through to the the mummy sequels he was just everywhere he, he was, oh, he was, was awesome movie the, the nuclear movie um Jesus, uh, he was great. The Dazzle was really good as well. Um, Blast from the Past. Have you ever watched Blast from the Past? I have not. Oh, we're going to watch Blast from the Past next season. That is a great movie. Um, and it's just basically this dad thought it, it, the Cold War, a bomb dropped, so he brought every his kid and his wife down to the shelter. And then they, <laughs> like 30 years later, he, um, he has to go up to the surface. It's just Brendan Fraser as someone who's has that like 1960s attitude in like the 1990 oh. world. Oh, it's, it's a really rom-com. Good. It's, it's a rom-com. You might even like it for that yeah, reason. But awesome. It's a, it's a really interesting movie. I loved it. Yeah. Um, but I like that kind of movie anyway. But anyway, yeah, uh, Brendan Fraser. Love him. Uh, yeah, I love him. All the good in the world to him. Yeah, great guy. He's great in this too. Only, you know, uh, easily top three movie screamers ever, Brendan Fraser. Oh. He does that panicky, angry energy. Oh, like, dude! Gah! I love it in this when he like the f- <laughs> when he fir- the first time they see Imhotep's mummy when he's like has just stolen the American guys. I just call them oh, the nice. Americans in this because I ca- I don't know any of their names and they're See, that's what they're treated as. Oh, oh, those yeah, they're Americans. They're referred to in the course. movie multiple times as <laughs> the coarse Americans or whatever the, those and Americans. And they always go no to British like, not you, of course. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> but when the first guy loses his eyes and tongue and the first time the first time Brendan Fraser Rick O'Connell sees Imhotep and Imhotep screams at him and his response is just to scream back at him and shoot him, <laughs> and then later in the movie the. The three fucking the army, wall yeah. crawler mummies come out and he screams at them and they scream at him and he just goes, Nope, fuck <laughs> this shit and runs away. <laughs> oh, that's, and there's so many good scenes of that. I remember when he's like on the ground and he's trying to reach for his sword and all these zombies are slowly trying to like throw a tombstone or a rock on top of him. And one of the mummy arms grabs onto the, the blade and he just grabs the mummy's arm <laughs> and swings. It's just so many scenes like that. I was like, That's really fun. Like, it's a lot of fun in this movie yeah it is that's that's the biggest thing about it i think is it's super fun like it's yeah. it's just it's just everybody looked like they had a great time doing it. although by all accounts um a lot of the crew did not have great times because they shot in the sahara desert and multiple crew members they had they, they in the, the production team made a drink that cast and crew had to drink one of every two hours to stop them getting dehydrated in the desert Ooh. And multiple crew members had to be flown to hospital for snake bites and stuff. Um, okay. So when they were filming, like, the scenes in Hamanaptra, they filmed it on location in the Sahara Desert, and they built an actual set of Hamanaptra to f- shoot in. I was, but it was say, like, they filmed at Hamanaptra? No, no, they bi- that's all. <laughs> it's real? That's, like, a, it's an actual set that they built yeah. in the desert. And then the that's inside... Really it looks great. Yeah, it took them 16 weeks to build it. And they like yeah. they they conducted a geological survey of the area beforehand to get everything exactly 
right to fit into the scenery and stuff. And then the inside scenes are done like on set in England somewhere. But um, you know, yeah, I was. You know, at the beginning, um, when Rick defends the city, you know, the in the desert, mm-hmm. like there are heroes throughout this movie murder a shit ton of people, like a shit ton. It's in self defense. Yeah, I but mean, I yeah. think Rick easily goes into double digits oh, and far more. Rick's Rick's <laughs> body count is easily twenty plus before they yeah. reach Hamunaptra. Yeah, and Rachel Weiss as well. I think she killed a few people. There. Kills like six uh, people on the boat when they get attacked by the, yeah. the Magi. It's crazy. Like straight up. We and the thing is, I notice you never see the people who get shot in their face. They always have like a tumble of cloth in front of them. Oh, they like have that, some, yeah, there's something which, going on. There's a. It, the thing is, they did shoot them. It, it, first of all, obviously they're stunt doubles, so they're probably all the same person. <laughs> but second of all, I think you show the humanity and start going, "Oh wow, they are killing a lot of yeah. people." Yeah, it's. I remember the um. There's a scene uh, towards the end when Emotep's like, uh, everybody gets the boils and sores and they're all like chanting, Emotep. And then they're like trying to escape Cairo. They drive the car into like a group of like zombie people or whatever the mm. fuck they're people. <laughs> but they're, yeah, they're, they're that scene was pretty bad. It was crazy, right? But they're all hanging off the car and there's like a, a shot like from the front of the, the camera's like on the front of the car looking at the people that they're driving the post. into. But no, I was looking at everybody in the front. There's like 12 extras there and they're all standing in the front. They all have like head wraps and they're all like yeah. standing there dressed like that. And there's one guy in the back with like a red Ku Klux Klan hoodie. He's got like a big pointy hood that's red. just stick, And he's just standing in the back staring at the camera. And I was like, who oh, the no. F- no, sorry, uh, Kazi, you saw the devil agent. You'll die in... Well, I was like, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> what? I'm oh, gonna it's, I'm gonna go back into the movie and screenshot it and like I'll show it I'll put it on Twitter or something because I'm like we're who making is, the cover. You're right. I was like, who is this man? He looks he's so dressed up so differently to all the other people. Talking and then the he's gone. Scene, <laughs> talking about the driving scene that when they're running through the street, at one stage a person gets thrown off the side and in mid-air gets hit against like a lamp post across his back and falls. And this is part of me going, How did they do that? How? Like his back should be broken maybe it maybe was it did. maybe it did yeah <laughs> maybe uh, but it did. seriously it's like my god yeah no so many practical effects in this as well in, yeah so like, many Mo- a lot of it is in even like well, obviously the zombie obviously the mummy is not that was um yeah. ilm industrial light no, magic no, that's actually just uh um, that was, yeah Buffalo, that was just him amazing actor. well actually the um so the 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 full on mummy is full cg it was mocap yeah. arnold voslo did the mocap yeah. Um, but him when he's like say before he's fully back to normal, you know the bit where yeah. you can see like through his it's cheekbones, his you see through him and stuff. Yeah. That was the real him, and they added the see through stuff afterwards. And ILM said it was incredibly difficult to do. Yeah, they I were like still they were, be incredibly difficult. To do yeah, now, they were like that was the really hardest hard. part of it. And they spent like of the eighty million dollar budget, fifteen million of it was paid to ILM to do the CG. But there, a lot of it was practical, like the stuff with that's when Rachel Weiss is covered in locusts and rats and stuff. Those are real. Yeah, that's real locusts and shit. She's just lying there's there a, covered in rats. <laughs> there's a really great scene. You know when the, the fire starts to fall from the sky at the hotel, and like they show one of the fire things like hitting the ground from the sky, and one person catches fire from it. And it's a re- it's the old like stunt where a person gets caught in fire and runs around like a stunt double thing. But I realize you don't really see that much anymore. Like that's. Self emulation thing is not a thing that's done much in Hollywood these days. And like uh, he was yeah, genuine no, on fire for like five or seconds, five seconds. So or I'm sure there's people just out of sight who literally will jump on him and put it out. But like it was really impressive. Yeah, he just, walked into two fires. Just Wilhelm scream left, right, and center. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> no, it's, just, it's just stuff like that. It's like you know, nowadays you can see GI fire on people. I guess that's why they do. But that was like genuine. Proper oh yeah, that's stuntmen. Fire, that's like, you know, stuntmen are the crazy. most underappreciated and insane people in folk. They're all nuts, yeah, but they're the most yeah. underappreciated people in film. They yeah. should. And now, like Disney's trying re- to replace more and more of them. Yeah, it's but they're really, really. It's a disgrace that there's not an Academy Award for stuntmen. Stunt, yeah, it's a disgrace. There should be. Even purely for choreography, Do, uh, yeah, ju- there ha- yeah. there really, really should be by now. It's been yeah. so long, and they're the they really are the backbone of a lot of movies. They make yeah. or break them. 
even if you want to go for the obvious stuff like Jet Li and Jackie Chan and all of them, like they definitely deserve a thing for stunt doubles. Like, like the man. Oh yeah, the stunt doubles into organizing things stuff. Yeah, it's it's and yeah. it's not just a oh they put their lives on the line. I mean, partially that obviously they try to reduce danger as much as they can, but how they are pulled off. Like it's not a medal of oh my god, this person almost died. We should get them out. No, it's about how tricky was this. How much work did it take? That should be awarded for sure. Yeah, and it's not even. I'm not. I'm not even talking about big action like fucking throwing yourself out a window from sixty yeah, fucking yeah. meters or something. Even going back to like, it should have been a thing back when like fucking Buster Keaton was doing shit. Like oh, the yeah. shit that he did was like, wh- yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah. Like yeah, it's crazy. It's anyway, choreography. Shout out. it should yeah. just be a category called choreography. Yeah, That's shout it. out, shout out the stunt crew, in particular yeah. for this and just in general because they're awesome. Yeah. So. That's uh, let's we're 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 pushing through. We're eating up our time. Let's go to um, our Jesus moment. Let's pick out a Jesus moment. Yeah. Do you have a Jesus moment, Daniel? I mean, it's it's the scarabs. It's the fucking scarabs. scarabs. Yeah, they're pretty fucked even up. Even now, even though I, I can see the bad CGI bumps, even now it's just like ah. It's it messes mm. with me yeah. every time. <laughs> Body they, like, horror. Like we were saying yeah. before, they're the real fucking horror. They're thing. fucking man. Fuck them. I can yeah. deal with the mummy. Just leave the, that fucking swarm of beetles or scarabs coming towards me. Like the fella that had Rick, um, like enslaved, and he was going to hang him. Do you think they were like when he picked the scarabs off and it was like blue gold? And do you think he just looked at the blue gold and just like do you think it's some Egyptian who like put the blue gold shell on him? Back in the past, went yeah, that mm-hmm. stand still. Yeah, I mean, it'll be awakened in like a few thousand years. There had to have been, I guess, right? I like how they explain it away. How like there's just a brief sentence where I think Evie finds like some dead scarabs and shows them yeah. to like Rick and them at the campfire. It's like they can survive for a very long time on nothing, and it was like, oh yeah, that's how a very long time being three thousand years <laughs> stuck to a wall. But these ones died. <laughs> like what? Happened? Yeah. Or were they magic? Were they part of the curse of Hamunaptra? Who I knows? I mean, they seem to definitely pay attention. Yeah, they were, I don't know. They were, they were under weird the that control they, of your man anyway, were they? I don't know. Which is weird because they they ate him. But then they went, once he was released, like, ah, sure, look, we owe him a few favours there now because we ate him. I mean, yeah, they years. spent, he couldn't, maybe he didn't die. They spent a long time together. He learned to communicate yeah. with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, the first few hundred years, like, oh no, these scarabs, they're eating me alive. And then after, ah. yeah. Baby, yeah. you got married. All oh, your kids. Probably. My my Jesus moment um, is a scene with Benny. It's when Bye, Benny. when Benny when Benny meets Imhotep for the first time, and he's like backing up yeah. scared. And first, <laughs> I just I just think it's it's such a it's a small little thing that you maybe you wouldn't think much of, but it tells you a lot about Benny as a character. So when he first meets yeah. Imhotep, and he pulls out um. A crucifix that he has hanging around his neck, yeah. and he starts praying, like saying like a Christian or Catholic prayer or whatever. Yeah. And Imhotep, Imhotep doesn't respond, so he's like, "Okay, no, not that one." And then he just puts out a massive jumble of things he has around his neck, yeah. and they're like symbols like of every faith. symbol of like every yeah. fucking religion in the world. And he tries like Buddhism, and he, and he knows <laughs> all their prayers. Yeah, he knows them all. He like, like so says he their main prayers. It. So he has them, and it's just like he's pr- he he's all about self preservation. Benny is trying every single thing he can to save his own skin, and then eventually he pulls out like the Star of David and starts speaking Hebrew, and Imhotep yeah. recognizes Hebrew as the language of the slaves in ancient Egypt, yeah. and thinks, "Oh, I, I this guy's a slave. I can use him." Kind of thing. <laughs> it's, it's just it's not that part. It's just a bit where he pulls out the jumble of fucking things, and he goes through like, "Okay, no, cr- you're not." Christian, that won't work. Let's try Buddhism. Let's try Islam. Let's try <laughs> let's yeah. try Judaism. I'm just gonna keep throwing religions at you until you stop. <laughs> I just love it. I think it's a great. It's also, scene. Th- actually, as we're talking about religion, like this was uh, a pre nine eleven movie, and it's really interesting how like there wasn't a sense of um, censoring Islamic terminology. Like, we kind of got since 9-11. Because we just see people say, well, you know, Allah bless them and Allah bless you. Where, which at the time would, like, obviously it's completely accepted and normal. And even in the movie world, it was just like, yeah, that's not. And post 9-11, you know, 
the movies just kind of got rid of that or made Islamic people the enemy or evil. And even as people who, like ourselves who obviously rise up above bullshit like that about making people evil because of what faith they practice, it's still weird to see it in such a very passive, casual yeah, way in the Yeah, it's odd and it's 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 definitely it's it's very becomes very obvious once you think about it in in terms of pre and post 9-11 why the sequels yeah. moved away from that or moved in a different direction and certainly maybe why the third movie is nothing got to do with it they're in china in the third movie yeah. and they switched up everything um oh right That's interesting wonder why they went to china who knows yeah, probably some it. budgetary reasons but yeah and it is it is cool but those are our <laughs> Jesus moments. Let's do some yeah. final thoughts on the mummy. Yes, Mr. Frodo. It's over now. It's over now, Mr. Frodo. The mummy, 1999. I, f- I just, I fucking love this movie. I really do. This is, to me, like, this movie is... Right at the end, like, this movie is the last, I think, proper, like, action-adventure romp that was, like, really big and successful. The year after this came out, superhero movies started. Yeah. X-Men came out in 2000, and now it's just... We don't get action-adventure movies now anymore. We use a different template. We get superhero movies. Everything is a superhero movie. And this is the last... Like, The Mummy was the last... Like, this era, you had, like, The Mummy, The Lord of the Rings, Gladiator, all these kind of big, like, historical, epic, action-adventure yeah. romance things that aren't... You just don't get them anymore. Like, they're yeah. they're not... They just don't have... There, there are some. Obviously, there's some. They're, they're not just dead-dead. You'll get the odd one here and there. But they're not big. They're not big box office smashes. They're not what people look to. Not that people don't want them. They're not what studios want to make anymore. Because they don't see the money in them now. They think, oh, well, it, let's, we're going to make, like, the Mummy remake they made was just a... M- I didn't think it was as bad as the reviews suggested when it came out, but it was still a mess. And that was you know, probably 80% well, Tom Cruise. But <laughs> it was 80% and Tom Cruise, thing- 80% them yeah. trying to follow the superhero Marvel formula of let's set up a universe type thing in this. And yeah. here's Dr. Jekyll in the middle of the movie for some reason, because he's going to be a thing. Here's Russell Crowe as Mr. Hyde. Like, what? What? Why? <laughs> you know, I think that's what Marvel did right originally. They made their movies and that's then added an after credit scene. Like it wasn't, you could watch the entire movie and it didn't have to be part of the expanded experience. But the after credit be like, oh, that's a nice tidbit. That's cool. Yeah, and that because that's all yeah. they were initially. When the first after credits scene thing was, first one was um, uh, Tony Stark and General Ross in that bar, and uh, yeah, Tony yeah, yeah. Stark approaching him. Tony yeah. Stark and General Ross, and then you had Samuel L. Jackson in the, the Avengers Initiative, um, which was cool. But yeah, I don't know. I just I love this movie, man. It's it's great. It's um, obviously it's. The Mummy and The Mummy Returns were big movies for both of us, I think, when we were, you know, in our early teens. Um, Yeah. I don't know, it's Um, like... I would say they are the best example for movies of their time in the best way possible. Mm, Yeah. They are very, very clear late 90s, early 2001 movies, but they're great, like really well made. They are, yeah. And then I, people, yeah. I think there's, if this movie came out today, there are, people would have a lot of problems with it. I think, um, yeah. In probably. certain instances, I don't think everything would be justified, but I know that people would have issues with Evie's character, and they'd have issues with certain elements of the thing, and they would take issue with the casting and stuff. They they would, and I'm not saying they'd be completely unwarranted or. You know, some I would mean, be, some wouldn't be, but like, in, yes, they, they would definitely, there are, def- like obviously yeah. there are things in it that wouldn't be, to, you know, that people would be correct maybe to have some issue with, but it's yeah. just fucking, this, I just love this movie. It's just, yeah. I just I mean, want it, I, mean, I want something I, like this again. It's what I really want yeah. to happen is just a I, big, heartful, earnest yeah. adventure to come out. I usually fight against the whole, oh, boo to superhero movies because... 
even though I think it's obviously oversaturated and we're getting too many. Um, I still think those movies can be very versatile. I think uh, before the newer phases for Marvel, for example, they got a little bit samey, but it kind of shaked it up again, which I'm happy about. But I don't think it's worth it at the expense of an entire genre. You know? Yeah, no, it's not. I like I we like superhero movies. You know, we've yeah. we've talked we talk a lot about them on this. It's just that they're everything is a superhero movie now. Even things that aren't a superhero movie is a superhero movie now. <laughs> it's just like that's like that's the that's the hit template that every studio like tries it's, to follow now. And it's just like, what's the last um act, comedy action hero that you know of that wasn't Marvel or Tom Cruise? Wasn't Marvel or Tom Cruise? Yeah, <laughs> Jason Bourne, John Wick. Yeah, I guess John Wick. Yeah, John Not Wick. Very... Maybe, which yeah, is actually yeah. I actually thought of John Wick in this movie. When is it the um, well, it too, no no the professor guy? Uh, so I can't remember who says it. Somebody is talking about Imhotep to like Evie or somebody, and they're like, um, he will he will not sleep. He will not eat. He will not stop. And my brain immediately went, John Wick will come for you. <laughs> and you will do nothing. Because fucking pencil. <laughs> with a fucking pencil. John Wick will, Imhotep will come for you. And you will do nothing. Because you can do nothing. <laughs> Which is yeah. mwah, the best scene in John Wick 1. I love it so much. But yeah, um, yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe there are, you know, maybe John Wick. Maybe. I mean, there's the action heroes and that kind of stuff. They've tried. Like, like they did. Oh, wait, I was about to say Jack Ryan, but that was Tom Cruise, wasn't it? <laughs> Shit. There you go. Oh, well. Yeah, I don't Creed, no. Does Creed count? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, he's an old franchise, too. It's Rocky. Again, I don't think Creed no, counts. No, he's not. He's just a, anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah. They should make more of them. I think. Well, those are that's that's our thoughts on the Mummy, nineteen ninety nine guys. Uh, yeah, we get to the exciting parts. We get to yeah. Well, we have our season finale is coming up. Yeah. Next week. Yes, Which next week as of episode. this release is next week <laughs> episode twenty four of our main show, and it's um. Yeah, but we're 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 not reviewing a particular movie. We're gonna do it a little bit different. We're gonna, you know, we'll do our regular intro and catch up and stuff. And then we, me, both me and Dan are gonna separately um, pick out like the favorite move, our favorite movies that we watched to review on the show. Maybe some of our favorite episodes that we enjoy doing. Um, we're gonna throw out. There'll be post on Facebook um, and on Twitter and wherever we we'd love if you guys could message us or comment or send i don't know fucking if you know us in real life text us or something or email us we do have an email address go drive past that house and make eye contact to us as you keep going yeah well yeah. yeah just like hold a sign out the window and blow the horn and maybe i'll see it or something but just tell us maybe you guys have you like a and can do like a steam trail um, if, you know? yeah if you want to fly a banner over uh ireland we might see it uh but yeah we, we just we want to ask you guys if you have f- like a favorite moment from the season a favorite episode a favorite maybe you have a favorite cover that we did for some of the episodes just little things like that and then we, we kind of so season one or the finale the first bit of it will just kind of a look back at the things we did in season one and uh, talk about you know that kind of stuff and then the second half of the episode we're going to tell you guys what we're doing for season two um i won't go into too much of it now but we have said on multiple occasions we have like plans for to develop the show and like do other things and move in some different directions maybe um and we'll give you test stuff as well yeah we'll and we'll we'll give you like more concrete information on the kind of stuff we're going to do for season two to like let you know because we have said we're taking a little break not for forever but we'll you know all the details of that will be in the finale episode so it's a little bit different um but we do hope you still tune in yeah. we do hope for all of those things please if you were it's listening, like maybe for people who can't listen in for next week or don't have the time, we'll, I'll write something up to cover some of the main points and then post. Yeah, obviously we're still going to be active on Facebook. Yeah, throughout anyway. But yeah, th- th- as always, if you are listening, please don't forget to head on over to Facebook, drop us a like over there, or head on to Twitter, drop us a follow. 
If you're on Spotify, drop us a follow. Apple Podcasts, drop us a, a review or something would be super awesome because that's oh, great. No. Always great. Look, anything. The next person to put a review on to Apple, I will kiss them. Or if you prefer, I won't kiss them. One or the other. So winner, winners all around, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's so it. anywhere, anywhere that we have review <laughs> things available, please drop us in. We do once again. I, I once again, I am asking for your <laughs> support in this. Uh, we do have a supporters page thing set yeah. up on Acast. That if you want to, it's completely not necessary. But if you want to throw some money our way, that felt yeah. um, weird to say. Like, but yeah, you, know, you don't have to. But it's there, just so you're all aware that it's there. Um, we'll get more into it next week, but there's definitely programs we would like to do, but we realize we won't be able to as regularly as we could because this is not our main job. This is a side thing we're doing. Uh, we're talking about doing Patreon, but obviously, the, you know, the bigger support we have, even just in commenting and sharing, like the more of this stuff we can do. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's about as much self-abasing for public likes that I can take for one afternoon. So thanks again for listening, and we will see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Astrolog. Super Grant! <laughs>